Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and today we will be understanding Negleria fowleri's life cycle. If you've seen my previous video where I have discussed the morphological forms of Negleria fowleri, which includes trophozoite form, flagellate form, as well as the cyst form, I've discussed the morphological features and also discussed their role in Negleria fowleri's infection. And I'll just brief a few things regarding Negleria fowleri. Negleria fowleri is also referred as brain-eating amoeba. It can, it can cause damage in the host brain, as you can see over here, as well as it can live in the environment and it can also cause infection in the host especially in humans and the infection is known as uh, PAM which is primary amoebic uh, meningoencephalitis. We'll discuss everything about the life cycle, how it survives in the environment and I'll discuss few of the important aspects of the life cycle. Okay, So let's go to the next slide and we'll discuss everything about the Negleria fowleri's life cycle. Okay, So we'll start creating the entire illustration and we'll also discuss the life cycle in detail. Negleria fowleri is the organism which lives in the warm fresh water. So uh, first I have to create illustration for the warm fresh water which is right over here. Okay, so we'll start with that one. And uh, Negleria fowleri is the organism which lives in, uh, uh, in water bodies where the temperature, temperature is slightly higher. It's higher than 25 and lower than 45. So this organism is more, uh, you know, it likes the temperature where temperature is a little bit warmer and, and uh, you know, poor sanitary conditions, they are being followed. This organism is going to survive. Let me move these aside from this. Okay. All right. So just imagine this is a pond uh, which contains warm, fresh water. It can be a swimming pool also. Uh, where poor sanitation, hygienic conditions, they are not being followed. And most of the time, most of the time, uh, the, the uh, amoebic forms, which includes uh, the trophozoite form, will be present in the sediment. Most commonly, it is the sediment or the bottom of the freshwater bodies. So I'll just put some of the trophozoites right over here so that you, you know uh, where this form is uh, most commonly present. And I have discussed already the morphological forms, so I'll not go into the details of morphological forms right over here. But as you can see, this is uh, the water body and in the sediment or in the bottom of the water body, you will find a Negleria fowleri, right? Next is Negleria fowleri is not intentionally infecting humans. It can survive in the environment and there is no need for any host. So that means this parasite is, uh, is not having a obligate host or it does not require a specific host. It can live inside the environment, uh, in the environment, and it can uh, survive nicely. So, in the environment, how this life cycle goes? So, you'll have uh, the trophozoite form, and we all know we have already discussed this one. A uh, trophozoite form of this particular parasite is is motile form. It can feed on bacteria. So, for example, these are the bacterial cells that I've tried to. Uh, you know, create and it is, you know, feeding on these bacterial cells. You can see the cells inside also. And as long as the environment is favorable, as long as food is available, as long as nutrient is available, it will live in that water body and will not change into different form. And there will be some, you know, conditions where this particular form will get converted into the second one, which is the flagellate form. And flagellate form is required when there is uh, change in the nutritional status for example lower bacterial cells so these are just imagine this is the food for the bacteria and now it's getting depleted and once the food is getting depleted that means the amoeba needs needs to move from one uh, place to another one so that it can survive right so as you can see over here now why don't we also label them at the same time so this is uh, the warm water body so this i'll lab label right over here i think i think this should be this should be nice right on the corner Okay, so here warm body is there. Then you have trophozoid stage. So this is our trophozo trophozoid stage. I'm having a hard time placing these labels. And this is the flagellate stage. And I've discussed these stages, their features. Please go and watch that video. It's also available. I posted this video, uh, you know, th that video before this one uh, in the in the parasitology playlist. So you should be able to find out morphological features of uh, Negleria fowleri, basic science series, and you'll get that video. Second one is flagellate form. I've also discussed about the role. Final is the cyst form. Now imagine there is no food available and temperature is also getting slightly lower than uh, 25 or more than more than that. That means the conditions are not favorable. What will happen then this can get changed directly into cyst form and, and also let's label that. This is the cyst form. 
So this is our trophozoite form. It has the, uh, the motion and it can acquire food by using lobopodia. All those features were discussed in that video. So using lobopodia, it can acquire the food. Here, flagella is there for uh, rapid movement so that it can move from one place to another. Third one is cystage where no locomotion is there. It will acquire double layer tough uh, wall around itself and that will protect it from the diverse environmental conditions. Now, what will happen if, again, the environment becomes favorable, this can get changed into this form, which is again trophozoite form and it will survive nicely, right? So it's very simple lifestyle. And you can see there are three different stages and there is no human involved and in how human is uh, getting into this story. So what happens is when you are, uh, you know, playing in the swimming pool or, uh, you know, it's not nicely sanitized is contaminated what will happen this form trophozoid form especially it can go and basically infect humans and there are two ways we can acquire water one by drinking it second one is by inhaling the water droplets when we are you know doing uh, you know water related activities so for nigleria fowleri when you drink water it will not survive in your digestive system because our digestive system will uh, kill the pathogen or kill the kill the parasite we have acidic ph and that protects us from nigleria fowleri getting into our system but if this goes through our olfactory system through our nose so what will happen in that case so let me use this illustration so as you can see right over here this is human nose okay let me use the arrow human nose and what is happening the the trophozoid which is this this trophozoid form it's moving and and the person is doing water related activities is, is getting some water inside the nose and then this trophozoid can enter through this uh, through this nose and it it will attach to the nasal mucosa from there it can target the olfactory nerve okay so this is really important from there look at look at the capability of this uh, uh, the parasite it can it can enter into the nose and through the olfactory system it can uh, reach the brain so let me move this a little bit so from here it can uh, through the nervous system it can reach to the brain and once it reaches to the brain it can cause serious damage so it can cause serious damage to the brain tissue that is why i'm using this uh, red kind of inflammation Hello zone. So you can see over here. Clear, clearly, it entered into the into the brain, and now it is causing damage to the uh, to the brain of the patient. So there are a couple of things that I want to mention uh, here. So it can enter in the nasal cavity, and that is the risk point. Next, it attaches to the nasal mucosa and migrates along with the olfactory nerve and to the brain. And, and when it enters in the brain, what will happen? It can release enzymes and cause extensive tissue damage. All those enzymes, they have the capability to cause uh, the damage. And immune system in our brain will not be able to, uh, you know, stop that. And it's very, very quick. This condition is known as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, which is characterized by fever, severe headache, uh, nausea, vomiting, stiff neck, seizures, and also abnormal or altered mental status is another possibility in that case this condition is fatal in many of the case most of the cases and there are very few cases where patients survived and it takes few days to uh, almost two weeks and the patient is gone so you can you can understand how how quick this uh, infection is and once you know once the host is dead then then uh, amoeba is also dead and an immune system is not able to control this one this is very very rare and almost universally fatal condition Human to human infection is, is not there. So there will be no infection from one human to another one. If there is infection in case of one human and the survive, it will not survive uh, after the host body uh, dies. Uh, so it will be dead right over here. It will it will have its normal life cycle and it will it will change its form uh, from cyst to flagellate or, or cyst to trophozoite and trophozoite to cyst. But in, in the human body, it will not do that. Ultimately, it will, uh, you know, it will grow and it will uh, it will cause that death uh, death of the patient next another thing is in the uh, you know in the environment it reproduces asexually and it it will divide the trophozoid will divide by by the process of binary fission i hope uh, you know that what is binary fission 
it, it can move it can move from one places to another one it, it can have flagellated form and especially during cold conditions what it does it gets converted into uh, the cyst form so this is the general life cycle and i've already discussed the infection i've already discussed uh, the transfer of the amoeba from the environment to the host brain and uh, you know let's label them also so here again this is the trophozoite form which is the infective form and this is uh, our poor brain which is getting infected uh, with the amoeba and a lot of damage is happening and because of that we have already discussed that a lot of complications can arise right so I think uh, you know we have covered everything. We have also designed this illustration from scratch, and these are these are the food or the microorganisms. Uh, they are not level, but uh, you can understand this, right? And we have also discussed every aspect of uh, Nigleria fowleri life cycle. You can visit CDC website. You can see uh, you can read uh, the information regarding this. A lot of information is available on Nigleria fowleri. I hope this video helped you to understand the infection and also the life cycle of nuclear fowlery. I'll bring more videos in, uh, in future and if you like the video then please stay tuned, watch all the videos and if you like the content then please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.